While I really enjoy carving wood and lathes, I'm always looking for alternative techniques for creating things like gill plates and lips. So for this project, I've stolen some ideas from the children's toy box, shiny dome stickers. But rather than relying on stars, moons and diamonds, I thought I'd create my own range and use them to decorate the glide bait I'll be making for this project. My name's Paul Adams, welcome to my channel, The Handmade Fisherman. The design for this layer is based on an older project, a smaller trout layer I made from balsa wood. The original drawings were made using CAD, so scaling them up to a larger bait was relatively easy. I also removed some of the details, which I thought would be difficult to create using this new method. To make the body of the layer, I'm using some North American tulip wood I was kindly sent by a viewer. Although this is a non-native species of hardwood, there is an older specimen growing local to us, in the grounds of what was a Victorian country house, but is now a gallery and one of our favourite Sunday afternoon escapes. Having cut and planed the wood down to a uniform thickness of 19mm, I can use some double-sided tape to attach a template and cut it out roughly on the bandsaw. I can then use my disc sanding attachment on the lathe to bring the wood back to the line. With the template attached and the timber still square, I can also drill a small pilot hole at the centre of the eye through to the other side. Before removing the template, I can mark the positions of the hook hangers and the hitch point. To roughly mark out the centre, I've placed a pencil on a couple of scraps of plywood and after marking one side, I can turn over and lay down another line with the centre lying in between. Setting a pair of calipers to 5.5mm and adjusting the pencil height to match, I can add some guidelines for shaping before drilling out the holes for the hardware. I've also added extra marks on the midline in case the pencil lines get rubbed off. For shaping tools, I'm using a craft knife with a new blade and a curved sanding block. I've made this by cutting about a third off a piece of two and a half inch PVC pipe at about five inches long. To add the 120 grit sandpaper, I use some spray mount before pushing it into position. For speed on the sides, I can remove the bulk of the material with a knife. The shape I'm after is a more natural oval profile rather than just flat sides. To create this, I'm going to shape in two stages. First the slower curved sides and then the round over on the top and bottom. For the sides, I can largely work by eye, keeping in mind the sanding block which will give me the final profile. That profile should run from guideline to guideline, so I need to take the wood back to those outside lines. And when I'm happy the carving is getting close, I can sand it to its final shape. Once one side is complete, I can repeat the shaping on the other. When I'm happy with the sides, I can move on to turning the edges into round overs. For this, I'm using some masking tape I've cut into 5mm strips. I can attach these along the inside of the guidelines and then with a pencil, mark along and remove the tape. This should give me the transition line between the arc of the sides to where the round over begins. Then it's back with the knife and I can just carve the round over using the centre line and new guidelines to keep things together. When I'm there or thereabouts, the sanding block can even things out. To further refine the finish when the shaping is complete, I can work through a few finer grades of paper to 600 grit and then give it all a quick wipe down with some spirit. At this point, I can add the stainless steel screw eyes. Because of the length of these screws and the hardness of the wood, I'm just going to wet the threads with some five minute epoxy and screw them home. To seal the rest of the wood so I can test the body in water, I've mixed up some more five minute epoxy and I can rub this into the surface so it soaks in using a lint-free cloth. Once this coat has dried, I can knock off any high spots with some 600 grit paper and recoat maybe a couple of times. To weight the layer, I'm using some 8mm brass rod. 
with a few drops of super glue, I can make a guess at their positions and temporarily stick them into place. After adding some hooks and split rings, it's test time, which normally calls for a bit of weight adjustment to slow the sink rate and get the lure leaning back a little. I can then mark, drill out and add the weights, capping them with a little more epoxy that can be sanded back when cured. With the blank body complete, I can move on to decoration and creating the face details. For this, I've printed out the template on photo paper. On the rear, I've stuck down some wide double-sided tape and then I can carefully cut out the individual shapes. To stop them from moving around, I've stuck down another piece of tape with the wax paper still attached. And after peeling the back from the pieces, I can stick them down temporarily. Then I can mix up some more five minute epoxy and using a spatula I've cut from some plastic, just spread it out on a piece. What I'm doing is pushing it around the surface so it coats each piece fully without going over the edge. The tension in the epoxy, if left for a few seconds, should pull it into a dome. And I can add a little more resin to raise that profile. I tend to work in pairs with the pieces so I can judge how much I need to add to get a rough match. The difficult places tend to be the narrow areas, but if I overdo it, I can still wipe away any resin from the edges. A hairdryer is normally enough heat to pop any bubbles, and then they can be left to cure. To help position the pieces, I've cut out another template which fits around the nose, and with the help of some pins through the eyes and scotch tape, I can secure it, before using a pencil to mark the edge with a line. With the template removed, I can scrape out shallow holes with an 8mm wood bit for eye sockets. After about an hour, the resin covered pieces should be firm enough but still flexible to fix into place and bend round the curves. To foil over the face, I can fold over a large piece of self-adhesive foil tape and use another template to cut out a shape slightly larger for both sides. With the backing removed, these can be stuck into place. Then using an embossing tool, which is basically rolled up soft paper, I can gently work the foil over the face. To get tighter into the details, I need to work over the joint using a metal-ended embossing tool I bought for a couple of pounds from a craft shop. This has a smooth ball on each end, so it doesn't leave marks in the foil. To polish up, I'm using the aluminium handle from an X-Acto knife. Then after some more tidying up, I can cut away the excess foil tight to the edge of the stickers and peel it away, which is always a bit of a fiddly job. Finally, I'm using a cheap clay sculpting tool to smooth out the edges and again, I can wipe down with some spirit to clean off any glue residue left by the tape. For the sides, I've cut out some more foil with a template and added some texture by rolling a bit of brass rod over some fine nylon netting. These are handed pieces and can be stuck into place and smoothed out using the knife handle. Then it's time to get the airbrush out. For the bottom of the layer, I've masked off the foil with tape and I can lay down a reasonable coat of white acrylic. The tape can then be removed and I can lightly feather in some white along the bottom edge of the foil. Next I'm spraying thin coats of transparent pink acrylic to give that rainbow trout look. And then on the underside and top a thin green shimmer coat. To add speckles I'm using an acrylic pen and a bit of guesswork. With a change of scene from the cellar to a less dusty environment, I can add the eyes. These were made in a similar way to the cheeks. I printed out the design and stamped out the pieces with a 7mm level punch, before doming them with a clear coat of epoxy, which is more transparent than the 5 minute variety. Once on the body, I can fill the less critical part behind with some 5 minute epoxy to bulk them out. To prepare for clear coating, I've suspended the layer on wire between a mirror ball motor that rotates at about 2 rpm and an ordinary swivel. 
For the resin, I'm using a clear coat of epoxy, which needs to be thoroughly mixed. I'm simply going to apply a thin coat with an ordinary paintbrush and wipe off any excess. To pop any bubbles caught in the surface film, I'm giving it short blasts with a hairdryer, and then it's just a waiting game. After about six hours, when the resin's partially cured, but a little tacky, I'll recoat it and then wait another day or so for it to fully cure and harden. First fish on the new layer. My heart beats just a little up. Let's get it back in the water. To see more handmade fisherman videos, follow the link to my channel. Or to be notified of future videos, please subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to support my channel, Please share this video to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or whatever social media you're addicted to. For feedback or to ask questions, leave a comment below. Finally, a big thanks to Mark from Lure Factors for the screw eyes, Michael from Cantana Lures for the clear coat resin, fellow YouTuber new to Wood One for the wood, and my wife for helping me write, film, and edit this episode. Thanks for watching. Can we go to Ikea now?